And welcome into this edition of ACAP Today for the week of March 21st, 2022. I'm Jason Parent with the Aroostook County Action Program. On this week's edition of A ACAP Today, we're going to talk about the Aroostook Community Collaborative, an organization that's been here in Aroostook County and brought people together here in Aroostook County for more than 25 years, actually going on 27 now. They were just preparing for an anniversary celebration like others of us were when the pandemic hit. We're gonna talk about their 27 years of service to Arusta County, its people, and learn about what the ACC is all about in our feature interview on ACAP today. But before we get to that, we first go to the news and information that you can use again for this, the week of March 21st, 2022. We begin in the news and information that you can use by sharing with you that ACAP's Breakthrough Youth Program under our ACAP umbrella is offering a series of gatherings for youth aged 13 to 18 years old. It's called Spaces. And the program is essentially going to be held every other Friday um, at the Presque Isle Housing Authority Community Room at the Birch Street Community Center. Now, there'll be youth-led activities uh, that will be youth-oriented, and they'll be offering snacks at this session. They begin um, this Friday, the 25th of March, um, at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and they'll be held again every other Friday through the 17th of June, so pretty much through the end of the school year. Uh, they'll all be at 1 p.m. with the exception of the May 6th and June 3rd sessions which will begin at 3 p.m. We encourage you to encourage your youth, especially those in the Presque Isle area who it's convenient for, to uh, reach out. Uh, if you have any questions, you can reach out to our prevention team, 764-3721. Or, or you can certainly just show up at the first session on March 25th. You don't need to attend all sessions. You can come and go, uh, but we'd really like to see some of our area youth uh, participate in this program. Again, give us a call here if you have any questions about this program or how to connect your youth with it. A Project TEACH is another program that we've been talking about here on ACAP today, and that stands for Transportation, Education, Access, Care, and Housing. It's a program of ACAP in partnership with the Maine Cancer Foundation, where we're helping individuals who are facing or who are dealing with a cancer diagnosis to be able to remove barriers for attending their oncology or cancer treatment appointments. Uh, this includes transportation or lodging costs when it's necessary to leave the area or just transportation within the area if that's an impediment for for you. Uh, please do reach out to Andrea White. We've actually had so many calls regarding this program that we've reached out to the Maine Cancer Foundation, and they've actually supported us with some additional funds to help folks with this because of the high demand on this and the need at this time right now. So please, if you are struggling through a cancer diagnosis at this time, reach out and connect with us about this resource. We have resources through Project Teach, but we also can serve as a clearinghouse to help you connect with local valuable resources like the Edgar J. Parity Cancer Fund or the Bridge to Hope Project in the North and in the South, respectively, or CANCER here in Central Arusta County. We're happy to connect with them on that with you as well. The number for the direct contact for this, 554-4150, or you can email Andrea at awhite at acap-me.org. CoverMe.gov, we're reminding folks, we, we had talked about the open enrollment period that was happening in uh, the late part of the last quarter of last year, but we are reminding folks if they missed open enrollment that there may still be an eligibility opportunity to get in if you had a, a change in uh, your employment status, for example, or just your healthcare coverage status, there are opportunities to get in. And many folks who have worked with us on CoverMe.gov are actually very impressed, even more so than when they were in the uh, federal uh, health insurance marketplace. This new state uh, run health insurance marketplace actually has some more affordable plans. So we do encourage you to reach out to Andrea White, even if you don't have a qualifying event at this time, maybe reach out to her to sort of get an idea of what next fall might look like when open enrollment opens again and ways to get into a potentially different plan that's even more cost effective for you. I just shared Andrea White's contact information, but she's also the contact information for this program as well, and she'd love to hear from you. We are also uh, encouraging our county community, especially those who are not connected with oral health services, uh, to please do so connect with us. We are offering oral health screenings uh, for any Arusta County youth age birth through 18. Our own ACAP dental hygienist, Lucy Morin, is available to do oral health screenings, cleanings, varnishes, molar sealants, that kind of work. And if there's further work that's required, we're going to happily help connect you with a dental home. And as a matter of fact, we're going to try to help get you connected with a dental home either way so that you can have ongoing services. Now, this service is free, again, for those 
Latinos, youth age birth who have a main care card. For non-main care participants, there's a $42 private pay cost. But if that's an impediment for you, we will want you to speak with uh, the dental hygienist, Lucy, and her team. Uh, we're not going to turn anyone away from services. We will uh, help figure out a way to help you pay that uh, that that additional private pay costs. So again, do reach out to us if you are in need of oral health services and do not have access to them otherwise. Otherwise, we have some great providers here in Aroostook County, and we certainly encourage you to look in your communities uh, to connect with services there. If you are having difficulty paying your utilities at this time, and we know many folks are with the increased cost of electricity, with the increased cost of fuel oil, we're really encouraging those who rent. Again, unfortunately, this is for those who rent only to reach out to us about the Maine Rent Relief Program. It's a partnership between the CAP agencies and Maine Housing through the Emergency Rental Assistance Program provided through the federal government pandemic response. Please do give us a call at 764-3721 if you need help completing the online application, we'll, we'll, we'll do it right for you online. Otherwise, if you want to apply yourself, you can go to mainrentrelief.com, complete the application online, make sure you select Aroostook County so that application is forwarded to ACAP and we will begin the process. It does take, depending on flow, about four to eight weeks to process that. So if you anticipate that you're going to be having challenges as, as long as these costs, uh, extraordinary costs on utilities and uh, heat continue, uh, please do consider getting that application in now. It's not too early and you're eligible to be in the program for up to 18 months. And for those, especially seniors who are concerned about this being an offset on your income and making you challenged to be eligible for other programs in the future, the good news on that one is, and we're partnering with the Agency on Aging to make sure we get this message out, is that the payment goes directly to the landlord on your rent and on the utilities goes directly to your utilities provider. So it does never appear like income to your household. So you can rest assured on that. Again, please do give us a call if we can be of assistance to you as a renter in this regard. Uh, we are also reminding in our COVID-19 uh, section of information here that we are continuing to provide our community get connected with vaccination and boosters. Uh, there's a website here that you can uh, explore the main.gov slash COVID-19 slash vaccine website to see where you can get a local uh, vaccination next nearest you. You can also give us a call if you're having difficulty navigating that or just need assistance finding a site. Our team of support personnel here are able to help you do that and navigate that. I just draw your attention to this map. There are very few parts of our country remaining that have a high transmission state and Aroostook County is in fact one of those at this time, we had dipped slightly, um, but we are back up to high transmission rates. So we're really encouraging folks to get their vaccination in. Don't let transportation be an impediment for that. The Department of Health and Human Services is offering free rides to people who need them. They're asking for a 48 hour in advance call on that. So please do consider doing that and we can help uh, make that connection for you as well if you call us to get a vaccination connection. So don't be shy about doing that and connecting with us. Uh, there are new variants that are popping up as well. So this is a very, uh, still a very good time to get uh, vaccinated or boosted. And continuing on our coverage around COVID-19 things, uh, we are reminding folks that COVID-19 free tests are available to you. The covidtest.gov opened up again uh, federally uh, to allow another four free tests for homes that had previously registered. In addition, here in the state of Maine, there's another program. Uh, go to the accesscovidtest.org website where you can get five uh, tests in a kit sent to your home. There's a limited number of communities, uh, and you can certainly find that out by registering your address uh, in the accesscovidtest.org website. Again, if you have electronic challenges connecting, uh, we can certainly help you with that here at the agency. Give us a call. And we want to remind folks as well, and these services had gone down a little bit, but have ticked back up, ticked back up. We are supporting folks with uh, deliveries of groceries, meal support, and the like through a contract that we have with Maine CDC to ensure people are able to quarantine and isolate safely in their homes. Please do reach out to us if you are asked, if you are uh, presented as a close contact, or if you are uh, actually diagnosed with COVID-19 and need uh, things brought to your home. We have a team member that stands by that fulfills these requests specifically. Uh, we had, again, an uptick this week in those after a slightly lower period but we encourage you to utilize this service if you need it. It is not an income eligible uh, service. Everyone is available to access this service and we certainly encourage you to do that if you're asked to quarantine or isolate. 
Uh, we also want to remind folks if it, it is tax season um, and we're under a month now on the preparation for taxes, if your household has a combined income of less than $58,000, you are eligible to have your taxes prepared through the Cash Coalition. And here in Aroostook County, that Cash Coalition includes ACAP, United Way of Aroostook, New Ventures, Maine, and other partners, and has some sponsorship support from the County Federal Credit Union. You can visit cashmaine.org to schedule your appointment. And again, time is limited, so appointments are limited as well or you can dial 211. This is a wonderful program. I had the opportunity to visit the sites in Fort Kent and Holton recently. Um, and in addition to getting your taxes prepared, there are some ACAP folks that will meet with you after you've had your taxes prepared to check on eligibility for other services and to talk about things like a match savings account if you want uh, to invest your uh, tax return if one is coming to you in something like that that helps with various things like um, children's education, starting a business, purchasing a home or vehicle. So great opportunity to have an extended conversation after your tax appointment, uh, after your taxes are filed. And lastly, in this week's news and information you can use, if you or your family needs any assistance, if you're struggling right now, as we know a number of folks are, please do give us a call here at ACAP. If we haven't talked about a specific service that you're in need of, uh, that's available to you. Uh, our navigators are well aware of those, not only within our agency, but they can help navigate you to some of our social service partner agencies here in Aroostook County, who will be able to help pick up some of those services and provide those supports for you. So do not be shy about giving us a call. That's why we're here, 764-3721. And that's this week's news and information you can use. Uh, with that, I'm very pleased to welcome our two guests to today's broadcast. Uh, it's great to welcome, first of all, I will acknowledge Gary Sampas is not only the chair of the Aroostook Community Collaborative, which we're going to talk about on this broadcast, he also happens to be the vice chairperson and a member of the ACAP board. Gary, we're so happy to have you serve in both capacities and thank you for being with us. Thank you. And Jeanette Rivard is a founding member of the Aroostook Community Collaborative and continues that work to this day. Uh, and we're welcome. We're so grateful to have you uh, on board with us in this broadcast as well. Jeanette, welcome. There we go. We will. Oh, we lost Jeanette for a minute. Uh, here there we are. Is. There we <laughs> Welcome, Jeanette. That was the way to make an entry. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, let me start right in with you, because as I just noted, you are a founding member of the Aroostook Community Collaborative. So take us back, what was it, 27 years, back to March of 1995, uh, to talk about what the Aroostook Community Collaborative is, collaborative is, why it was founded, and, and, and the mission and the efforts that you've, you've done since. Thank you. Well, I was working at the time for an agent, state agency called the Bureau of Children with Special Needs, which was a... a a part of the Department of Mental Health and Mental Retardation, uh, a, a department that no longer exists because it merged with Department of Human Services in 2004. Um, and the, the bureau director um, for months actually had been saying, start a case resolution committee in, in Arista. And um, I asked a number of times, what is it? What, what are the guidelines? How, how, what, what is it you expect? And, and he kept saying, just start it. So I um, contacted some of the providers in, in the area and, and uh, other child serving uh, individuals and invited them to a meeting that was, uh, quite frankly, the people who showed up showed up uh, as a, a, a leap of faith because we really didn't have uh, a whole lot of direction. And uh, fortunately, a couple of days before the first meeting was to be held, um, we, there was Main State Housing announced they had some money for youth homelessness. Well, there's something we can, we can talk about. And so um, that's what we did, that first meeting. And Gary was one of the original members and, and I was trying to remember who some of the other folks were. And, and I know I'm going to miss some, but some that came to mind in the last uh, couple of days were Tori Eaton from ACAP was there. Uh, Fred Boyd from Marshall School System. Wanda Anderson, who was doing case management at the time, Ralph Scheidler. Uh, and those are some of the, the original names that, that uh, came to mind. So we um, coalesced around the issue of youth homelessness. It's interesting that uh, 
looks like we are making some progress after 27 years. So I guess persistence pays off. Um, and so we've worked on that. We weren't successful in getting the money uh, to Aristoc, obviously, but uh, began conversations about it. what else uh, did we want to talk about. And this was specific to uh, to youth and, and uh, with a focus on kids with developmental disabilities, behavioral health uh, needs. And then in, I believe, 96, when Governor King uh, was elected, he formed the Children's Cabinet and uh, wanted to uh, have local groups uh, function as local children's cabinet uh, groups. And so we um, said, yeah, that, that sounds like what we're, we're about. Um, and so, and by the way, or the original name was Youth Network. Uh, and then it became Youth Net and, and has had a few iterations since. So um, we functioned under the Children's Cabinet for a number of years. At that point, the membership was very uh, prescriptive. Uh, we had to have someone from each of the five uh, child serving agencies and, and uh, some other categories, including parents and youth. And uh, youth was hard, harder. Well, it was hard to get parents involved but, uh, because of the, the timing and the needs that they had to uh, be home for their kids. And of course, that was before Zoom. Today, it might have been a little easier. Uh, we did have some youth uh, at one point. There was a group in Fort Fairfield called Students Baking a Living uh, mm -hmm. that, uh, and they were able to participate as part of that program. So it was, uh, they certainly added flavor uh, to the group. Um, so that, that, those were the, the original uh, times. In um, early 2000, um, the, the Bureau at, at that time was uh, informed that we had uh, been named in a will, uh, that there was a trust, uh, the Howard and Espa Michaud Charitable Trust. Uh, and the purpose of the trust was to provide funding for uh, kids with hearing impairments uh, from the from Arostook, but the greater Presque Isle area as a, as a priority. And so uh, Youth Network uh, became the uh, managing group uh, for that. And, and we continue, the ACC continues to review and authorize the expenditures on that. So those are some of the early times. Um, uh -huh. Uh -huh. So certainly a lot of a rich history in that 27 years and a lot of, of change, just like there's been change in Aroostook County, there's been a very dynamic change in, in the group. Uh, Gary, as the current chair, one of the things I've, I've, I've had the pleasure and the opportunity to, to, to be a part of some of the meetings of the Aroostook Community Collaborative, um, through that time, I think one of the things, and, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the things that uh, it seems to be the most um, gratifying and the most, uh, you know, effective with the Arusta Community Collaborative is that whether it was a more prescriptive or what it is today, more of a participatory, all-inclusive uh, membership participation, that people come to the table ready to identify not only challenges, but solutions and kind of leave egos and organizations, if you will, at the door and say, what can we do to make, make life better in Aroostook County? That's at least my perception. Is that how, how you felt, feel that the group has continued in its evolution? Yes, initially when we were under YouthNet, we would have de-identified presentations by behavioral health specialists and people working within the field. And they would come together and we would have brainstorming sessions around specific youth and families with needs. And those cases would be totally de-identified and confidential. Uh, and now we have, uh, we still can, can take on that role. And we do when hearing presentations around the Howard and Espa Mitchell Charitable Trust. But we do have uh, our members come to the table now, not so much representing their specific agencies, but there with ideas. There with uh, ideas as to what they would like for presentations and presenters that we 
that we bring to the table every month. And we meet the last Monday of every month uh, at ACAP facilities or by Zoom from 2.30 to 4.30. Uh, so we're always getting ideas from the members as to whom they would like to hear from. And we have brought uh, a number of outside uh, of the county presenters, which have then started doing some work in Aroostook County, uh, such as the uh, New England Genetics Network, uh, initially did a presentation and then have started doing uh, some work here. So we do uh, bring a number of uh, various entities to the table. And we have also in the past offered uh, two rather large training sessions around ACEs or adverse childhood experiences and child trauma. Uh, and those have been fairly well attended and both large sessions were approximately 100 people for a day long retreat. Uh, but the ideas that come forth at that table are, are varied. They're really wonderful ideas and we have some very caring people attend and anyone is open to attend. Even if you're not part of an agency, you're just a community member, you are more than welcome to come to our meetings. Jeanette, it sounds like the work of Arista Community Collaborative is all is both inclusive in terms of who can, can sit at the table and what is discussed at the table. But I would say that one of the constants from the founding 27 years ago all the way through today is very much focused on the well-being of children, whether you were talking about homelessness issues or the Howard and Espa Michaud Trust, which deals with a specific sector of, of children who, who have a hearing impairment. That seems to be very focal in the work that you're doing. I think it is, and, and of course, that was the original uh, foundational uh, system that was set up, um, and the Children's Cabinet really solidified that. One of the things that I uh, should have mentioned with the Children's Cabinet is that uh, at that time, that came with a, a small budget that we could use for um, one time only, uh, no other source of funding types of things that will make a difference uh, in a, a family and, and chi a child's life and their family. Uh, and that was very helpful at that time because uh, I think there's a lot more flexibility in services today than there was at that time. And so it did meet uh, some very unique needs that Gary, we were able to fulfill. Indeed, Gary, I think also from a perspective of, uh, you know, organizational uh, collaboration and collectiveness, the Aroostook Community Collaborative has become uh, the place where other organizations, I know our organization has come and said, you know what, we need to have the voice of the consumer sector represented on our board. And you as a group that really brings a grassroots community together, uh, have that, have your fingers on the pulse of that. And so we've uh, accessed that in that opportunity, but there have also been other organizations like a helping hands uh, uh, that have that have that are no longer exist, but have picked up some of the work of, and especially the sort of having an, an entity to come to to be accountable to, in regards to Aroostook Community Collaborative. So I think that I think you'd agree with me that the work of Aroostook Community Collaborative has become quite widely recognized, both inside and outside of Aroostook County, for being that collaborative table where folks come together. And I would agree with you, Jason, and, it, and we are recognized as being probably one of the first, if not the first community collaborative within the state of Maine, uh, when we were known as YouthNet, we, the name, ch name changed around 2015, 2016, when we took on our current name. Uh, and we have worked uh, with marginalized youth, other, other co uh, coalitions, um, here in the county, around the Native American community, we still have access to the Department of Corrections uh, regional care team, and we can make referrals up to that team uh, for assistance and support where youth are involved in the juvenile justice system. Uh, so we do have uh, plenty of linkage to, the, to outside entities as well. Yeah, and, and speaking of linkages, Jeanette, I know one of the things that you bring to the table for the Arista Community Collaborative is to help the group stay in touch with sort of collective legislation that's being considered at the advocacy level. Uh, why is that so important to the partners around the table? Um, I think that uh, the interest that, that has been shown by the, the partners are, has been uh, mainly because a lot of people uh, don't have necessarily the time to 
uh, comb through uh, the the weekly list of legislation that's that's introduced and uh, it can be time consuming and if you're uh, providing services uh, that's maybe not the priority uh, but bringing the information to uh, to the group uh, it's, it's not a perfect science. There may be things that I miss at times. There may be things I, I put on the list and, and highlight that people say, mm, why does that matter? <laughs> but I, I err on the side of caution to, uh, to provide that. Um, and Gary mentioned uh, that you don't have to be a member of, a, you know, for, from an agency. And I'm certainly a prime example of that. Um, I, um, when I, went to work outside of the area at the end of 2011 uh, from there was a, a period of uh, four or five years that I was not part of the group and then I retired uh, six years ago and uh, have been more than welcome back to uh, to the group and, and uh, I identify myself to the group as a community member uh, would love to have others uh, join me in, in that role and, and Gary, that's, that's very true. And that voice of community members, just people who, who come in, who are engaged in their communities in some format, whether they're retired, whether they're youth, we've talked about the foundational component of youth. There are some really, um, really great conversations that start at a Rooster Community Collaborative that lead to some, I, I think of, and again, I'll just bring the perspective of one that I know was influential to us is hearing from, there are, there are folks, for example, you know, uh, community members from Van Buren, my hometown that are engaged in this. And, and we, I think our agency was inspired in, in hearing some of those conversations about, gosh, we really wish that we had more services from providers in our community. And, and it's not practical for the service providers to be able to have like a shingle in that community necessarily. So the, the, the congressionally directed spending uh, funding, for example, on a mobile services unit mm -hmm. was really something that I credit with an idea that was kind of born at the Aroostook Community Collaborative. But there have been many others and really it's really a great place for incubation and innovation to really start. That spark starts oftentimes, I think, at Aroostook Community Collaborative. Mm -hmm. I agree with you, Jason. And I think also one of the things we're really looking to try to do, which is what's happening in Van Buren right now with the Van Buren Resiliency Project, we are trying to look at how we can support community resilience building. Uh, and as part of the main resilience building network, which we have linkage to, uh, we're looking in any ways that we can support any uh, grassroots endeavors that, uh, that happen in the county. We're also very pleased to have representatives from the two major hospitals here in Central Aroostook show up to our meetings. And at this time, I'd really like to thank you and ACAP for uh, giving us a place to meet and supporting the mission that we're working at. Uh, so any way that we can partner with ACAP uh, in the future, we'd love to do that as well. And again, thank you very much for the opportunity to work with, with the wonderful staff people uh, who have been members of our group for, for many years. Uh, we thank you for freeing them up to join uh, and to participate in our meetings. It's our pleasure to do it. And actually, I think that we walk away from those meetings, our team members walk away with more than we bring into them, quite frankly, because of the diversity and the connection and that people are just leaving. It's, you know, we're happy to help in the convening process and providing the supports, but we by every means acknowledge all of the other partners at the table and their significant contributions. I think, Jeanette, what one of the things that that I've I've discovered about the Arusta Community Collaborative is as those just community members like yourself and others that come to the table is that we realize that the solutions oftentimes the best community solutions come from those local communities and from people in those communities and it's more mobilizing how organizations like ACAP and even you know entities in state government such as the one that you you worked with Jeanette for for your career how we can help be more in touch with the communities and the people that we serve and that's really what one of the, I think, benefits and awesome opportunities that happen each time that that group meets around a Zoom room or a virtual or an actual table. And while we may not use the, the term as much uh, today, when we had families present uh, situations to uh, the, the group where we were trying to find solutions, the, the bottom line was always, what would it take? You know, what would it take to whatever the problem was. 
And, and that's where we were able to find the solutions. And I think we still operate uh, on that principle without using that term, but, but that was a, a very uh, simple way of, of uh, not professionalizing the, the, the solutions, but getting from the, the families exactly what it is that they thought they needed. I think that that's still how we operate uh, around the table. Yeah, and Gary oh, sent this on as the as the chair, the current chair. One of the one of the highlights, I think, for you and for many others around that table, when uh, the, when the ACC gets together, and again, it's a very fluid membership. Folks can come in, come and go. We we I know that that's encouraged. Is that round table where you're getting updates from all of the partner stakeholders? Because that really, I think, shines a light on on great work happening across Aroostook County, and oftentimes evolves into further conversations amongst partners, out, even outside of ACC on, hey, how can we help you with this? Or how can we work together on something that will take this a step further? Absolutely. It's been amazing, the ideas that have come up over the last 27 years. And we look forward to at some point being able to celebrate a real anniversary. It's probably going to be the 30th now. Uh, but our goal at that time was to have representatives from all over the state here to acknowledge the work that's been done uh, by Aroostook community members. Uh, unfortunately, COVID uh, really interfered with that process. Like literally March 13th, like that was right then and there. You were about, your, your anniversary <laughs> date was like, I think it was, yes. that was a Friday the 13th. In 2020, it was a Friday the 13th because I remember coming back we had Head Start Day at the legislature and we were driving back and uh, and I was with somebody in the car and, and not that this made any sense, but I said, should we just keep going through the border and head to Canada? Like it was getting everywhere. That wasn't going to make a difference. But I just, I recall that um, very vividly. And I remember the discussions around the table that there were going to be celebrations throughout the year. Um, so yes, hopefully we can uh, get that very, uh, the very, very rich uh, celebrations happening that celebrate the culture and the uh, impacts of ACC. What have we not talked about? Let's start with you, Jeanette, that we want to make sure folks know, understand how they can connect maybe with ACC to be a part of this exciting opportunity. Oh, wow. Uh, I think we've covered a whole lot of ground. I think one of the things that I, I do want to piggyback on Gary mentioned the uh, appreciation for ACAP and, and you know, ACAP was at the table from day one. I mentioned Tori Eaton, who was uh, an ACAP employee at the time, was, was very instrumental uh, from the start. And uh, so I think I do want to highlight that. So Gary, let's, let's transition to you and anything you might want to add, but also, you know, it used to be pre-pandemic, it was just show up uh, at ACAP at this time in the afternoon on the last Monday of the month. And that was certainly a welcoming and opening inv open invitation. And it's wonderful now because we can bring people in together through Zoom, but it requires you to have that, that link. And so we don't want anybody to miss out on that opportunity. So anything else you want to add and how folks can say, gosh, I'm hearing about this ACC, especially, you know, Northern and Southern Aroostook. You mentioned we have the engagement of the two local hospitals. It would be great to have engagement, more engagement from the North and the South, because this is the Aroostook Community Collaborative. Uh, so sort of, sort of take it from there, Gary, if you would. Absolutely. And we do have a Facebook site that we're trying to keep updated, but it's been difficult over time to keep administrators uh, working on that site. But we do have a Facebook site. Uh, and uh, reaching out to Gloria Duncan at ACAP would be a way to be added to the mailing list uh, and to receive all our notifications. And we do have a steering committee that meets once a month as well to uh, plan every meeting and to plan future meetings as we're right now planning out as far as August for the presenters who will be presenting at the August meeting. So there is a lot of work that is going on behind the scenes and I would be remiss if I didn't congratulate ACAP on its 50 wonderful years of serving all of the people of Arista County and being able to bring um, a wealth of support to those people in need. Well, it's been a, a tremendous 50 years. And as you know, Gary, uh, from serving on our board of directors, it's because of so many wonderful people who have worked. You mentioned Tori, and it's, been, it's people who are working here now, but people who have carried this organization through from the last 50 years. And I certainly don't want to take away from 
uh, the in the community, the communities that we serve, not only the individuals, the leaders in the communities, but the, the very people themselves, the people who come to us, who turn to us for services in early care and education, uh, health and wellness, uh, workforce development, and of course, uh, housing and energy services. Uh, those people are truly the ones who uh, enrich the lives of our staff in every day and our opportunity to connect with them and to serve them and to connect them with services. And in many, many cases, we're the we're riding, we're riding shotgun, if you will. They're the ones in the lead of, of making tremendous things happen in their lives um, and, and, and their success. So it's so great to be able to sit with the two of you virtually anyway, uh, to talk about uh, a great partner organization at Bay Caps that's celebrating 27 years um, and, uh, and overdue for a silver anniversary that may be a 30th as we've talked about. Um, but uh, we're happy to, to partner with you and uh, certainly do want to encourage folks. ACC is a very open and welcome organization. If you can't remember how to connect maybe with Gloria Duncan, ACAP's executive assistant, just go to the ACAP website and there's an info link there. And if you just put in, I'd like to be included in ACC meetings, Gloria will certainly get that information. So there's, you know, don't worry about not remembering her name or how to get her email address. Just go to our website and we're happy to connect uh, and get that information to you so you can start uh, joining into ACC meetings and, and really benefiting from some very rich conversation and some great community solutions. Gary and Jeanette, thank you so much for being my guest on this week's edition of ACAP Today. Uh, we look forward to connecting with you more um, as the uh, hopeful 30th anniversary uh, makes it and happens here in Aroostook County. And we uh, support the work that you're doing. And thank you both for dedicating your time and energy to such great causes like ACC or the ACAP board in your case, Gary. Um, it's, uh, it's a lot of work and a lot of energy, but I know that you find it as rewarding as our team does here at ACAP to help make a difference in people's lives. And I know that you do it from, from the heart. So thank you so much. And thank, thank you, you, Jason. And thanks to your wonderful team that you have there at ACAP. Indeed, voice every day. Thank you. Uh, before we leave all of you on this week's edition of ACAP today, if you would like to do some really purpose-driven work uh, and, and want to connect with ACC as a volunteer, but might want to consider a career uh, in service to your community, we certainly have openings across Aroostook County uh, from Presque Isle and Caribou all the way down to Dyer Brook and up into Fort Kent. And we'd love to see your application. You can go to acap-me.org if you'd like to apply for any of these positions here. Uh, we'd love to see your application come in. And lastly, before we leave you on this week's edition of ACAP Today, as we have been doing throughout these episodes, and specifically this year, we leave you with a photo of the week. And this year, we've been focusing our photos of the week on throwback photos that depict ACAP's 50 years of service to the community. And we leave you with this throwback snapshot. Look at that piece of equipment. Uh, this is from 1979 out of our photo vault. This is Greg Doughty, who was an ACAP employee at the time, who's working with a youth participant in our workforce development program at the time, and they were reviewing career information that was generated by the guidance information system, a different kind of GIS, I guess, than we're used to today, um, to help her connect with uh, employment and uh, obviously education opportunities as well, workforce development. We spoke about Tori Eaton um, on this program quite a bit, and Tori Eaton led that department for many years very capably here at ACAP, so shout out to Tori. Uh, in this program, and also a thank you to all of our dedicated employees, Greg Doughty among them um, from the past and present, who make uh, make things happen, make the magic happen every day. And as you can see, uh, thankfully, there's even a rotary telephone uh, on that desk there near that career uh, education workshop booklet. So that's how far we've all come. Uh, and again, this is 1979. Jeanette and Gary, I think I was, yes, I was five years old. So at that time, so I do remember the rotary phone. Um, so anyway, and I was both. not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank you both for being my guest again on today's edition. We'll be back next week with another edition of ACAP today. We've got a great episode coming up for you uh, here. I'm not sure whether we're going to run it next week or whether we're going to put something else in, but in the coming weeks, you'll be hearing from our current board chair, Trudy Gorno, who will be joined by two longtime board chairs of ACAP, Dana Connors, who served very early on in his tenure uh, as the city manager in Press Style as the ACAP board chair for almost 10 years, and Steve Richard, who served as the longtime um, board chair for ACAP. They're going to join us in a retrospective conversation on ACAP's first 50 years. It's a discussion you won't want to miss. It was as great um, a, a discussion as our three former CEO a discussion that we aired a little bit ago, and you want to catch that uh, coming up soon in a future edition of ACAP Today. 
Until then, we'll see you next week. Uh, have a great week, everyone, and enjoy the beautiful start of spring weather.